Today we're canning stew meat and veggies. I used uh, about four and a half pounds of stew meat and I just kind of tried to guess at how much vegetables, how many vegetables I need needed. So you'll just have to do a, a roundabout guess of what you think you'll need for your quart jars. I had a little bit left over and since I was also canning roast, I saved potatoes and carrots for the roast. But in the veggies we used uh, Sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, carrots, bean, green beans, and lima beans. You're going to add some oil to a pan. You're going to season your stew meat. I used a recipe that I make up because it's not as salty. And you're going to actually flour it. You want your pan good and hot. Then you're going to put the stew meat in your skillet and you're going to brown it. <coughs> when you don't brown things that you can, it tastes like it's boiled. And has no flavor so we're going to brown this to get it to add that flavor and reason it's floured is that will be we'll add a little bit of broth to it later that we'll just use some better than bouillon some water and add some broth to it and it will actually make its own gravy when it's canned so then our veggies will be dry and you'll mix the two together you'll have a pint of stew meat and a quart of veggies and that is equal to three pretty good servings. So we're just going to add all our meat, stew meat to the pan. I think I had to do two or three batches to get all of mine done. It is important that you do get your stew meat browned. Uh, if you don't brown it, it's just not going to taste well. Uh, this also, putting the flour on there, like I said, it makes its own gravy in the jar while it pressure cans. And when this comes out of the, the jar, it will be fork tender, like you have cooked it all day long. We also used um, two medium onions, cut up not real fine, but kind of just in, say, a 30 inch chunks. And we're going to actually put that on top of the stew meat before we put it in the canner. So we're going to also need some better than bouillon. I used some better than bouillon beef and some better than bouillon vegetable just to add a little bit extra flavor. Uh, my pan has a bow in the center, so I just need to add a little bit of oil because it's all draining to the side. As you'll see, we're going to keep cooking this until we brown it. I've got this burner. It's actually a big, huge uh, burner, and it, it was on high, so I cooked it pretty fast. Gonna re remove this batch and keep going and get it all done so we can get it jarred up. But while the meat is cooking, I peel my carrots, cut them up in chunks. You don't want your carrots real small because they'll get mushy. So you're gonna cut them up in anywhere from half to three quarters of an inch chunks. And your your uh, potatoes the same, sweet potatoes the same. I used uh, organic green beans that we had in the freezer and. Uh, Organic lima beans. These were pretty good sized lima beans. They weren't like regular uh, small butter beans. So we're just going to keep going until we get all of this browned. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cook the meat first and get it in the jar and get it in the pressure cooker. Then we're going to season and flour our vegetables. That's what we'll do the carrots potatoes and sweet potatoes, not the green beans and the lima beans. We're going to use a half a cup of green beans per quart and one quarter of a cup of green lima beans. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up the better than bouillon. I used approximately about a teaspoon of the beef and a teaspoon of the vegetable. Uh, this four and a half pounds of stew meat made uh, five of the large mouth, uh, I call them short square pints, and then I made six quarts of vegetables to go with it. But the, usually you would open, you know, one jar of the stew meat with one jar of your veggies, and that's going to be three pretty good sized servings. We actually couldn't stand it. We had to have some for supper tonight, so I already opened a jar of each. So we're just gonna, this is like a little milk frother. Works really good for uh, mixing up this broth. The better than bouillon. 
in the water so we can get it poured in the jars. We're not going to go to a one inch headspace. We're going to be leaving probably about an inch and a half to two inch headspace because as the meat cooks, it's going to go down in the jar and I want the meat to be covered in the liquid, but I don't want to be, I don't want it floating in it. I want it to be pretty thick when it gets to cooking and it's, and it's, uh, it sets and cools. It's about time to start turning our meat over and get it to uh, the other side brown so we can be done with this. This is the hardest part of doing it, but it's well worth it. You're going to really enjoy the flavor that you're going to get from it being brown. I even scraped the stuff out of the bottom of the pan, and some of it even looked a little bit brown, or maybe even close to burnt, but I put a little bit of it in each jar so it cooked in there. It's just more flavor. I mean, it wouldn't burn to the part of the point of sticking, or even stinking, not sticking. So what you need to do is get your jars washed and prepped and keep prepping your your veggies to go with this. Even though they'll go in a canner later, uh, you can just start with a cold canner and the vegetables will be cool in an hour or so. So just start with a cool canner and you'll be fine. Okay, we've got all our meat in the jars. We have five of the wide mouth square, short square pints. And I mixed these onions up. I didn't probably use one and a quarter on the, the beef and I'll use the rest and with the veggies that we'll put in the pork jars. I just kind of divided just two cups out over all these jars and tried to put an equal amount in and when they cooked, as you saw in the first uh, part of the video, they really looked good. Onions are just flavor. You don't want to give up the chance for a good flavor. Um, the seasoning that I use on the meat and on the veggies is a seasoning that I make up and I will try to remember to put it in the comments because I don't put a lot of salt in it so you're able to season your food real well but not add so much salt that it's too salty. A lot of stuff that comes out of that people can, they just put too much salt in it. So I use a seasoning that I can control the salt and use a low amount of salt and even the salt that I use is a uh, organic sea salt. Okay, remember when you put your lids and rings on or just finger tight? Uh, yeah, I'm using the palm of my hand, but I've done this since I was 12 years old, so I know just about how much to tighten these jars. So they're just snug, but once you feel resistance, you just stop. Okay, we're going to start with the, this is sweet potatoes and uh, Yukon gold potatoes. We're going to add our seasoning to it and then I'm also going to flour these potatoes. Just remember you can prep your veggies ahead of time and just leave them in water and your potatoes won't turn brown. So I put my seasoning on, I'm going to flour it, stir it around and we're going to add a little bit more flour to it and more seasoning since we mixed it around. You want everything seasoned well, don't go light on the seasoning if you use the seasoning that I use. Uh, it's not going to be too salty, as heavy as I'm salting it. This seasoning has salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, a little touch of cayenne, you can leave it out if you don't like it, and it also has herbs of Provence in it, which gives it a really good flavor. Add a little bit more flour to the top, and that way it's going to help these veggies brown fast, and you can add that flavor into the jarred veggies. Since we're using the same seasoning, they're gonna they're gonna mesh well together. So put a little bit of water to kind of form a little bit of steam because the pot is cooking pretty fast. I'll turn it down just a, a little bit, but I'll turn it back up here in a minute and leave it on high when we get it going. Plus the steam will help wet the flour that's on the veggies and get them to start browning. This lid doesn't fit, but it also puts weight on the vegetables and makes them stick to the bottom of the pan and helps in the browning process. And it, like I said, it's not keeping the steam in. It's more about keeping the, the heat and cooking them a little bit to where they'll take on the seasoning.
Like I said, never when you're cooking, don't ever give up the chance to add seasoning and flavor to your food when you jar it. Uh, as you think about it, it's going to cook into these vegetables in the pressure cooker, and it's probably not going to be enough if you just lightly season them. So I season my stuff pretty heavy. But like I said, I'm using a seasoning that does not have a lot of salt in it. A lot of seasonings that you buy in the store are 50% salt. So, like I said, we make our own. I even make my own taco seasoning and even my own Italian seasoning so we're not adding a lot of salt to our food. What I'm doing is I'm actually prepping my other veggies. I cut up some more potatoes and carrots and just getting them ready to go in. I'm cutting up my onions and getting those ready for the next uh, jars. You can put however much onion you want. You can use frozen season blend out of the store, make it easy. We had these in the crisper and they need to be used, so I used them up today. You can also get your your lids washed, your jars washed, let them be drained and ready to uh, add the food to it. The veggies will be added to your quart jars. I mean, you could make this in smaller quantities, like these half pints if it's just for one person, or you know, and you do the same. Use a pint jar for the veggies, but there's three of us, and this is perfect serving for us for three people. So if you've got a big family you're probably going to do more. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide this as a mixture like I said of potatoes, sweet potatoes and a little bit of carrots. Not a whole lot. I'm just going to divide it out within the jar so everything is equal as to how much is in each jar. If I get this in there we can also add our frozen green beans and our lima beans. All you need with this meal when you get it open is warm it up and fix you a, a can of cornbread to go with it. Like I said, we're equally distributing this out to each jar so we can get the equal amount in there. You can use wide mouth quarts or you can use regular mouth. These vegetables are cut up small enough that they're going to fit in the regular mouth jar. I used some of each. What I had that we'd used without having to open a new case. This won't last long to be something quick and easy for the busy holiday season. Things that are going on if we don't feel like cooking, we'll just open a jar of each and like I said, cook some cornbread and we're done for the day. When we get this pan empty, we're going to add our other vegetables and get them cooked the same way. Everything's cooked the same way, so that way you can, everything's going to taste the same. So, you cook your stew meat this way, you're going to cook your veggies that way. To see, your stew meat needs to cook in a pint jar an hour and 15 minutes in the pressure cooker. But these vegetables, I only cook them 30 minutes and 10 pounds in the pressure cooker. So it takes a lot less time to cook the veggies than it does the meat. And if you cook them all in the same jar, your vegetables would be mush. Nobody wants to eat mushy vegetables. I do my roast the same way. I'll have another video out that shows you how, how to roast. And uh, always, if you have any questions, Put them in the comments below and I'll be glad to get back with you until I answer all of the comments. There's some food shortages that have happened lately. This is probably a good idea to have some meal prep ideas like this going on in your cleaning <coughs> closet so that way you've got extra meals if something comes up and you can't get things you need at the grocery store.
Like I said, we're cooking this is carrots and potatoes mostly, so we're gonna cook all this the same way. I did it this way because I knew I was gonna be doing roast and potatoes and carrots, and I used the same seasoning on them, so if I had too many for the stew, I could just put it in a jar and it worked out fine to go with our roast. It is a little bit long, but I wanted you to be able to see everything that we did in the process and to show you in real time this is really pretty fast prep. I said it'll take longer to cook the, the stew meat than it will to do the veggies and all that. So, But it's well worth the time and the effort that you put into it because the taste at the end is, is what you want, is what's going to taste good. Because if it just, if it, to me, if you don't brown, uh, especially beef, before you pressure pan it, it tastes like boiled meat and it's horrible. Like I said, let's add the flour in the beef part and the bouillon, it's going to make its own gravy. Didn't use near as much flour on the veggies as I did the meat. And a lot of times what I'll do is I have some, uh, they're called dessert pans that I use in my Instapot. And I will put all this in one of those pans and put it in the Instapot for about 10 minutes and let it heat up. And it just tastes, to me it tastes so much better when you heat something up either in the Instapot or put it in the oven. I'm not too big on the taste that you get from the microwave. It makes things taste rubbery. Okay, well, first I'm going to go ahead and add my frozen vegetables. This is green beans. That's a one-fourth cup scoop. And I'm adding two, which makes a half a cup of green beans goes into each jar. I'm going to be doing a series on meal prepping, so there will be other videos behind this one. It will give you uh, meals you can basically prep in a jar. I an actual stem in the green bean, so check that out and check it. And I'm going to add our these are large uh, lima beans, green limas, they're not uh, dry limas, they're green limas, so they'll cook. Because I'm not adding any broth to this, this these veggies are dry food. So I know that some of you tell you, oh, you should add broth, you should do this, you do that. You know, each their own, you try it my way, then if you want to add broth, do it your way. But this tastes much better, a lot of times the broth makes the potatoes taste to me, they taste milly. They don't taste the same if you put them in a broth and can them. So I like to do dry canning, and I'm not really too big on potatoes can, but I am this way. So if I'm going to can them, they're going to be in like for roast or stew, something you can open up and make a quick meal out of it. Uh, like I said, I don't care for them canned in, in water. It tastes horrible to me. Keep cooking our vegetables a little bit longer because they need to start browning a little bit before we start adding them in the jar. And then actually fast forward the video a little bit so you can see we're going to start canning these. You can see if they start, they look different. They look cooked. They're not cooked very much, but they're cooked enough that you can tell that uh, they're browning on the, on the sides and the flour in the mixture. And, uh, there's less steam, so we're going to start drawing them up. I'm going to cut the oven off and turn the stove top off, and we'll just get, get these jars drawed up. I'm going to add as much as we can, then I'm going to take a, a teaspoon and push them down because as they cook, they're going to sink in the jar. So it's not necessary to really leave a, 
one inch headspace, but like I said, as they cook, they're going to reduce down in the jar. This will be something you'll really enjoy because it tastes like you just you know, cooked it in the oven or on the stove for days. <laughs> really, you know, for hours, like you spent all morning cooking it on the stove. It's that good. In fact, when I got these canned, uh, my mom and dad had to have some. They couldn't wait, so they're already eating some. Always be sure when you're uh, pressure canning to make sure you clean your lids well and you know, get them clean when your jars are clean. And the main thing you remember is to wipe these rims down because all it takes is one little bitty piece of something or especially if you're cooking with something that's got oil in it like this, that one little place on the jar ring area it will cause it to not seal so and when I pressure pin I usually leave my jars out for a day or two remove the rings and then watch them you know I don't usually lose any but I have before put them up too quick and went in there and found a spoil jar so you know, if you have one that doesn't can't doesn't seal today put it in the refrigerator and use it uh, don't let it go to waste. I use the other part of the onion on the top. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a one inch head space because all this is going to reduce in the jar when it cooks. I'm not adding liquid. This is a dry can method. You research for yourself and see if the dry can method is for you. This is the way I prefer to do it. I'm not saying it's by USDA standards by any means. So you research for yourself what you would like to do. A lot of people say that this isn't safe, had not killed me yet, and done it for 40 years. When I was about 12, I started canning with my grandmother, and we did some of the same type canning. Uh, actually, one of her cousins, who at that time was in her upper 80s, came over and showed her how to do it. Okay, this is what it looks like in the jar. And you can see it's got a layered effect, but there's like sets of drop in methods, so it's going to cook in its own steam and juices from the veggies that are in there. And here is our end product. You've got your stew meat with your gravy on the left and your veggies on the right. You open up one jar of each and you've got a meal. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. It's the pressure pepper.